reported. All right, so we're going to talk about uh, making a plan. That's our first problem solving strategy. And we're going to look at through, uh, throughout the year at different strategies to solve these problems. If I were to ask you all what's your least favorite part about math, some of you might say like dividing decimals, right? We did that the last two days. Maybe that's it. Maybe you hate fractions. But if I said, what do you think about word problems? You're like, oh, yeah, I hate word problems. So how many of you are not a fan of word problems? Like if you didn't have to do them, you'd be OK. OK, and that's, that's like throughout math, OK? That could be higher level high school, that could be elementary, that can be in other schools. But we have them. And I'm going to give you this little hint. Unfortunately, in real life, problems aren't set out 3 plus 5. Find the answer. Oh, it's what? 8. It's going to be in the context of shopping, taxes, work, finance. You're going to be looking at this with a lot of words. So here's my little plug-in. Um, I'm a math teacher. I really, really enjoy math. I love it. Like I, I'm thinking, sometimes I just find myself thinking about how to present something differently or how you could think about something differently. I like math, but I also like language arts. I love, I, you know what? I love grammar. I'm not going to lie to you. I love grammar. I also like history a ton, and science is just like baffling. Because what do all those subjects, and others, what do all those subjects teach us about? Or who do they all teach us about? They teach us about Jesus, specifically God. That's why that board's up there, and I'm going to try to drill it into you, that math teaches us about God. But so doesn't language art, don't language arts teach us about God? How? Okay, how does God communicate with us? Through the Bible. How do we look at the Bible, or how do we study the Bible? We do with our eyes by reading, by hearing words. Um, if you don't understand grammar very well, you can make it through life. Don't tell Mrs. Pennell. But I can say the same thing. If you don't understand math to the highest degree, you can make it through life. But the fact is this. The more you learn about math and language arts and social studies and science and even the fine arts and PE, the more you're going to get to know about how, how cool he is, how awesome he is, and then you realize, you know what? I can get to know that person. You get to know the person who spoke everything into existence. Think about your body. Uh, when you look at biology later on, you're going to find your body's doing a ton of stuff. Not only like in this level, the macro level, like I can move my arms and I can look around, but on the cellular level, on the atomic level, there are things going on that I can't even fully comprehend, and God spoke it into existence. And another thing here, with history, do you realize that everything is not random? Like, you know the things that are going on in our country? These are, these are tough times. They are not random. Who is directing each thing to happen at the appropriate time with the appropriate people? Who's doing it? God, if he really is sovereign like he says he is, that happens. And so when you start to get this, you're like, wow, this world is all working in different, different levels. You get to know a little bit about that. And then you realize, well, God, you are awesome. So math and science and all that, uh, all part of that. But word problems. Ah, I, we we're on a good subject. Now we go back to word problems. Okay. There are many word problems. And there are many different types of word problems, right? So what we're going to look at is what's one strategy for helping us to solve word problems, OK? So here's the first strategy, make a plan. And we're going to list out four steps. The first step is to explore the problem. Explore. And this is deep. This, I'm going to give you some deep things here, guys, so please stay with me. The first thing when you explore a word problem, read the problem. Hey guys, did you hear what I said? Read the problem. It's deep. Like you got to read it. And this is why I say it. it it's funny because even today, uh, the seventh grade, or sorry, the eighth graders had a word problem. And they're asking for help during the time. And I'm like, okay, how can I help you? And, and they're like, I don't know what to do here. And my first question is, did you read the problem? Yeah, 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 I read it. So 
So what does it say? Uh, okay, and I'm thinking, did you really read it? So I, I, I just say, read it to me. And then they read it. Oh, now I know what to do. Amazing. Like, if you did that, that's going to cut, like, half of the difficulty. Just read the problem, the whole thing. Just read it. Um, so do you need to know English to read that? In our book, in our example? Yeah. So read the problem, okay? You should ask yourself, what info do I know? What info do I know? So what do they give me? And, and honestly, sometimes they give you a lot more info than you need. And sometimes it feels like they give you not enough info. So find out. Did they give you how much money you make? Did they give you what period of time? Did they give you what country you were in? Some of that info is going to be useful. Some of it will not. But you got to know what info do, they, do I know? And then the next question, what do I need to find out? So when you come to class, don't check off, oh, I was already in uh, social studies, don't need that anymore. Language arts, whatever, we, we went through that, now it's math class, it's totally different. No, they're very closely related. So usually it's going to be like, find the difference of the two numbers, right? So then I'm like, okay, I know what they're asking me for. So look for those questions um, that might be clearly stated, maybe subtly stated. Okay, the second step, excuse me, is to plan. It's a deep, deep one here, so plan. Plan out what you're going to do, and, and just a little, some helpful hints. How do the facts relate? So remember all that info you got? How do the facts relate? So if they gave me the year it happened, or how tall this person was, or whether it was a, a survey given multiple times, all right, how did those all piece fit together? What are they trying to communicate? And then uh, I like this one. On under plan, make make a plan. By the way, you don't have to write these answers down. It's not like for every word problem, okay, read the problem, check. Um, look at what, I am, what info I'm given. So I like circle all the info given. In elementary, that's why I recommend they do like keywords. You remember keywords and word problems? Yeah. Those are good. If you're younger, just circle them. And if you still need to do it, circle them. But you should be able to at least find them in that problem after you've read it. But once you get all that info, make a plan. Am I going to add? Am I going to divide? Am I going to add, then divide? Am I going to estimate, then do my problem? OK? And uh, that's actually involved with the planning. Estimate. So when I say to estimate something, does that mean to work the problem exactly like it is? No, it means to usually round the numbers and work it out like you think you should have, like adding or subtracting, and just using rounded numbers. And you can do that a lot in your head. Okay, so estimate an answer. Scroll up here. Number three. The next step you should take here, this is deep. Solve. Yay, I thought that's the whole point of problem solving is to solve. Yeah, but there's some more involved to it. You gotta read the problem, gotta know what info you're given, gotta have a plan of attack, and then you gotta solve it. So here, use your plan. Use your plan. Okay, you had a plan, use it, that's it. These are, I think these are intuitive, but it's good to kind of write down if you're one of those people who need to like, okay, list off, did I do this, did I do this? And this will really help you out with word problems. Okay, but sometimes this happens. This is kind of cool. Let's say you decide to add. It said find the difference. You're like, oh yeah, add. And then you're like, no, that's not the answer. That can't be it. So you know what you do? If you need to, so this is if necessary, replan and rework. And that's if necessary. So like your plan, it failed. 
you redo it. Replan, redo. Um, that happens a lot, guys. As a math teacher, I am not perfect in math. I make mistakes. You're going to see some of the mistakes this year. Swivel, we'll see the mistakes. And um, that's going to be okay. Because then I look at, all right, what did I do? What can I do to improve it? And do it again. That happens. That's life. And that's good. Okay. Lastly, it's the fourth step here. Examine. And um, I like this one. This next thing you do. Okay, examine. So you solved it. You had to redo it if you needed to, but examine. Check your. I'm not sure why I did that. Check your answer. Check your answer. Yeah, there's a vent out there and it's very um, open. So yeah, you can hear a lot. I'm gonna do something to block it, so do that soon. So check your answer. And this is the question you should ask. Does my answer make sense? Does it make sense? Okay. Find the average height of the, of the students in your class and using these numbers, blah, 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 blah. And you get uh, 16 feet. That's the average height. Got it. Hey, hey, hey. I went through the steps. I added, then divided. I got 16, man. Mm -hmm. You did. And then you examine. Goliath in your class? Yeah. And his brothers? And everyone else is absent? Okay. Does your answer make sense? And the answer to that question would have been no. So then what do you do? You go back to step two, replan, redo. If your answer doesn't make sense, it's you, you go back, you go back to it. Um, another one is, these are kind of interesting. Uh, find how many apples there are in a bushel, in, in a set of bushels, uh, baskets, excuse me. And you add them up and get 17 strawberries. Uh, Mr. A, there's nothing funny about that. I added those numbers and I got 17. And I look at it and yeah, yep, yeah, you did add them right. So what's your problem? You got the wrong answer. Yeah, what are we? Apples and strawberries. Oh, they're the same thing, Mr. A. It doesn't matter. Um, units matter, by the way, guys. Units matter, okay? Units matter, always. $14 or $14 million. There's a difference, slight difference, slight. Uh, so here are the four steps. Okay, you have explore, plan, solve, exam. We're going to end the recording here.